Uh, listen, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to get you from 50 to 50. We're going to get you to past 50, maybe on to 60, and you won't even feel the pain. You know how I know that? Because Sheila Key is here and Dr. Peggy Spencer, and they're the ones responsible for this book, 50 Ways to Leave Your 40s dramatically subtitled, Living It Up in Life's Second Half. You guys have been living it up over in our guest waiting area, to the degree that many of the other guests have been complaining, asking you to leave. <laughs> but I mean, are you like this all the time, or is it just the energy of doing an interview and being on television? You can tell them the truth, Peggy. She's like this all the time. Okay. <laughs> is she really annoying then after a while? No. No, it was she's nine thirty, ten o'clock at night. I mean, if you're on the road together, does it get a little old? No. Woman is carrying a loofah. <laughs> Show them what you do with that, Sheila. Okay. It's low tech. Uh, uh, yes. We're low tech mamas. It feels so good. Isn't that an Islamic ritual? I think so. <laughs> this is one we. This is an Islamic ritual we can all love. Hey, today's forty Shall I is what? No, thank you. Just the same. <laughs> uh, it, it, today's forty. They're always talking about today's forty is yesterday's this. Okay, what is today's forty? Mm. Is it yesterday's 30? Is it? Uh, mm. What I've been hearing is 50 is the new 35. Oh. That's what I've been hearing. Mm -hmm. what, what have you been hearing? Yeah. 50 is the new 35, 40. Okay, and is it because of the fact that we're living better? I don't, I don't think we're living healthier from what I understand from See, that's the headlines. See, that's actually the catch. 50 is the new 35 if you're moving it. Uh huh. Yeah, moving. If yeah. You, and if you do it, it takes to stay healthy. Then you can be you healthy. Know what? We like have a so little old. time. I am obligated now. I've already asked your friend here about the loofah, and she got to use her prop. <laughs> can you explain why you have this ghastly green thing <laughs> in your in lap? The dark. What is this? <clears throat> this is a Hoberman sphere, and. <laughs> we, we had this at one of our other interviews, and the, and the interviewer said, "Well, what's it for?" It's not for anything. It's just it. it watch. I'll show you what it does. Yeah. You can do it. Actually, you're better at this than I am. There. Ta-da. Ta-da. It figures into our chapter play ball. I think that that's that's marvelous technically it, that yes. it does that. But why do you What's care? What's the point? Be <laughs> Metaphorically is why we, we use it, the, ho the Hobie also metaphorically to, mm -hmm. to represent how little dreams can get big if you just keep tugging on Oh, them. oh, I see. And how everything is interconnected and how beautiful it can be that way. Yeah. And, else, yeah. and it's just plain fun, and it's really important in life to have fun. Yeah. Okay, but is it more difficult today to have fun when you're 40, 45, 50 years old, no matter what, because you are constantly reminded about the recession and about the fact that nobody likes these people who are running for public office and that we're all going to hell in a handbasket and that's every headline. Mm -hmm. um, one of our suggestions in here is ignore the news. <laughs> Everyone should just be watching shows like yours. If we all just watch shows like yours then all that news couldn't just go well, on. We have to give people bad news every once in a while because we're obligated to let people know what the information is. Well, Otherwise, they would be ill-informed. That's true. Is it better to be stupid? No, no. And I and and the ignore the news is actually a temporary. It's like a take a take a vacation from the news. Are people age afraid? Uh, are, are they are they still looking in the mirror saying tomorrow is my whatever birthday? And oh, absolutely. oh my God! Absolutely. I mean, Totally, and, and that's one of our premises in the book is we're not trying to help people be young or be younger longer, but to appreciate where we are because there are a lot of wonderful things about being middle-aged. There are a lot of wisdom that comes only from having lived to be this age. Mm -hmm. So we're all about accepting where we are, not trying to deny it, but celebrating what it means to be 50, what it means to be middle-aged and be in midlife. How old are you? I'll be 50 on June 1st. Now, 49. all right, so June 1st is coming, right? Mm -hmm. Do you dread it? To be honest, sure, a little bit. But because of the fact that that means that you're middle-aged if you get to live to be 100? I mean, are you, are you talking about I'm your already own mortality? No, uh, I'm sorry? Are you talking about your own mortality that concerns you? You know, I think, yes. I think that's there for all of us, the fear of death and the, 
yeah, the fear of death, but also it's about youth worship in our society, how we are, you know, we're all about young is where it's at and young is beautiful. And, you know, as we get older, we're not young anymore. But, there, but we are also wise, we are calmer, we have our priorities straightened out, I think, to a, to a large degree. So we have a lot going on over those young kids. You seem like you are a lot of fun, and I don't think you just turn it on for television. No, no, I'm, I'm You have fun I'm with boisterous, life. I'm boisterous, yeah. Uh, okay, sense of humor. Yeah. Is that important? Absolutely. In fact, it's, it, we, we deemed it way number 50. Leave them laughing. Laughter is so important. Uh, still the best medicine, bar none. And it's actually been studied now. The good doctor talks about some of the statistics. They've, they've determined that we, you know, to get the full health benefits out of laughter, we should laugh. 200 times a day. I'm on 67 already. Are you? Is he? Uh, and this no is why word. we need more programs. Right, like and you guys were responsible for 63 of them. Oh, well, that's great. <laughs> the, the, the children children in our society laugh hundreds and hundreds of times a day. It could be 600 times a day. You're going to giggle later in the day with an appearance, are you not? We're huh? going to giggle. We will be at the Duck and Decanter on Camelback at Oh, yes. Oh, Six o'clock. See, see the, the duck is just one of the coolest places. I know. Oh, we've I know. Heard. I've never been there. She's no. been there. My she's dear friends, the Mettlers, own the duck, and we've known them for years. And they very generously offered to host us in combination with the, um, what's the name of the book? Uh, Changing Hands. Changing Hands Bookstore. Oh, in Tempe. Yeah. Well, well, just a second, I get books. to do this, too. One of the coolest bookstores yeah. in the world. That's you know? great. You're hanging around with good people. Yep. And, and you and your neighbors. Well, and, and you know what? And your I, You have to admit, though, I mean, if we're talking about age, I'm kind of cute for 173. You uh, are. You don't look you? Good. You're the standard. So. You're the standard. I'm better looking than Methuselah was at this point. By far. Hey, thank you very much. Duck and Decanter, what time? Six o'clock. And you know what? You can go. You can have laughs. You can have a brew. You can have a sandwich. You can even have a nooner. Well, they probably <laughs> should understand only when they get to duck and decanter about what that means. This is Pat McMahon. Stick around.